Ribbit, ribbit. Yeah, this video's a re toad. To which certain edits had to be made for copyright reasons. Ribbit, ribbit. Hey, I know that re toads tend to really annoy people, but look at it this way. At least in my videos, I don't waffle on about NordVPN or Raid Shadow Legends or some sh like that. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Enjoy the video. In 1986, Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short played the Three Amigos in this fun adventure comedy that puts a comical twist on the Western genre. Directed by John Landis, it tells the story of Lucky Day, Dusty Bottoms, and Ned Nederlander, three silent film stars who star in a film series called The Three Amigos, where they play heroic gunfighters. After a small village in Santo Poco gets terrorized by an evil bandit called El Guapo, the daughter of the village leader, Carmen, sends out a telegram for the services of the Free Amigos, without realizing that they are Hollywood actors. Thinking that it's an invite to perform a live show, Lucky, Dusty, and Ned head to the village, without realizing that they will be facing off against actual real-life bandits, and that in order to save the village, they will have to become real-life heroes. So, saddle up as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about The Three Amigos. A movie which is kind of like a precursor to Tropic Thunder when you think about it. Hmm. So, let's check it out. Number 10, Steve Martin helped to write the script. The Three Amigos was actually an idea sparked by Steve Martin himself. He approached Saturday Night Live creator and producer Lorne Michaels about turning this slapstick western story into a movie, where the two got to work on a script, along with composer Randy Newman. Yeah, as in the composer who gave us the You've Got a Friend in Me song from Toy Story. Newman even recorded several songs for Free Amigos, as well as providing the voice of the singing Bush. And thus, as early as 1980, Three Amigos was in production, with the movie originally going under the title of The Three Caballeros, which, as we all know, would eventually change to Three Amigos. So with the movie's production starting in 1980, why did it take six years for it to finally be released? Well, it's because they just couldn't find a director, with even Hollywood's biggest director dropping out of the project. Number 9. Original Director Steve Martin said that it wasn't easy trying to find a director to take on The Three Amigos, and at one stage the most successful director of all was going to direct The Three Amigos, and that was none other than Steven Spielberg. It was in the early 80s when Spielberg joined the production and was going to helm the comical take on the western genre, but ultimately Spielberg left the project to work on E.T. instead. It would make sense that Spielberg would be interested in Three Amigos, as at that time he was trying to break out into the slapstick comedy spoof genre with 1941, as well as the action-adventure genre with Raiders of the Lost Ark. And we can only wonder if the poor reception of 1941 made him change his mind about making more comedies at that time, and to work on his pet project E.T. instead. And thus the project went to John Landis, who at that time had his own string of hits with Animal House, The Blues Brothers, and An American Werewolf in London. In fact, something I've learned while making this show is that during the 80s, there was a lot of movies Spielberg was going to direct or asked to direct, but ultimately didn't. I mean, let's not forget at one stage he was going to direct the Tom Hanks comedy, Big. Number 8. Original Cast In 1980, when Steve Martin was putting the script together, the actors he envisioned to play the Three Amigos was himself as Lucky Day, along with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi as Dusty and Ned, which actually would have been awesome. When the movie was at the hands of Steven Spielberg, he had his own ideas when it came to the cast, and he wanted Bill Murray along with Robin Williams and Martin in the roles of the Three Amigos. 
When Landis came on board as director, Caddyshack and National Lampoon's vacation funny man Chevy Chase was cast in the role of Dusty Bottoms, along with Martin Short as Ned, making Three Amigos his first feature film. Even though prior to Three Amigos he hadn't starred in a big Hollywood movie, Short had already attracted a popular following thanks to his sketch comedy and TV shows like Saturday Night Live and SCTV. And Three Amigos was really his breakout performance, with him going on to star in Joe Dante's Inner Space the following year. Director Landis further said that if they couldn't get Short, next in line to play Ned was Louis Tully actor Rick Moranis. And as we all know, Martin Short and Steve Martin would go on to work together in Father of the Bride Part 1 and 2. Number 7. The Secrets Behind Martin's Lasso Tricks In The Three Amigos, we learn that the lucky character has quite the hand when it comes to using a whip and is very talented when it comes to lasso tricks. Well, this added feature in The Three Amigos is all thanks to the Big Mouse himself, as these were skills that Martin had acquired while working at Disneyland when he was a teenager. From the young age of 10 to 18, Martin worked at the theme park selling guidebooks, and then upgrading to dressing up as a cowboy in the Frontierland attraction, where he had to learn to do lasso tricks in order to impress tourists. So yeah, in a way, the Lucky Day character had already started to take form in Martin's early teenage years. Number 6. Filming left Steve Martin with a permanent condition It was while filming a pistol shootout scene that Steve Martin was left with a condition called tinnitus, a condition that gives you a ringing in the ear, caused by being exposed to a very loud noise. Although the condition can fade away in time, sadly for Martin the condition was more severe, leaving him with a permanent ringing in his ear. In other words, one of those prop pistols must have been incredibly loud. When addressing how to live with such a condition, Martin said, you just get used to it or go insane. So think about that. Every movie Martin has made since The Three Amigos, he has done so with that annoying ringing in his ear. The poor guy. It's amazing that he can still act, perform and be funny without the condition distracting him too much. What a trooper. Number 5. Filming Locations So given that The Three Amigos features a dry desert landscape, several locations were used, including Simi Valley in Ventura Country, California. Simi Valley has also been used in other movies and TV shows, including MASH and Little House on the Prairie. And it's also the location of the neighborhood seen in Poltergeist. Other locations include Old Tucson Studios in Arizona, which is often a location used to film westerns and period piece dramas for movies and TV shows, as well as the Coronado National Forest, and even additional scenes were filmed in Hollywood. Number 4. A Misunderstanding Between Chevy Chase and John Landis It seems that while filming one of the scenes where the three amigos are on horseback in the desert, Chevy Chase took exception to a line of dialogue his character Dusty Bottoms was meant to say. Chase objected to the line, feeling that it would make his character look like a total moron. And when he addressed Landis with the issue, Landis found it quite amusing, as he explains that Chase's comment about not wanting his character to look silly made him think, quote, What movie has Chevy Chase been making? Which does make you wonder if Chase actually somehow thought that he was starring in an actual serious western movie. Personally, I would have thought that all the slapstick comedy and the fact that his character is called Dusty Bottoms was a bit of a giveaway, but there you go. So instead, Landis gave the line to Martin Short. But Landis held no ill feelings over the ordeal. On the contrary, he found it really funny and amusing and also said it's one of his favourite moments that he has ever had with an actor. (laughs) So at least everyone was cool with the misunderstanding and could laugh it off. (laughs) Number 3. Deleted Characters Thanks to the Blu-ray release of Three Amigos, we've learned that there are several deleted scenes of Three Amigos that were left on the cutting room floor, including an entirely different opening to the movie. In fact, two characters were erased from the final film entirely, including Miss Renee, who was played by Fran Drescher who was something of an antagonist to the Three Amigos, with her character acting as an upcoming actress who was going to replace their fame and spotlight. The Miss Renee character did sort of turn up somewhat, where we see a movie billboard advertising a feature film with her character. 
But I don't know, that doesn't really look like Fran Drescher to me, unless this piece of artwork was drawn up before the part was cast. As well as a character who is described as being an unstoppable cannibalistic mountain man whom the three amigos encounter, who was played by late stand-up comedian Sam Kinison. Landis said that he found the scenes with Kinison to be really funny and that it got good laughs from the movie's test screening, but it had to be cut due to time restraints as it didn't really add anything to the story. When Landis contacted the studio about finding the scene to add to the Blu-ray release, he was told that it could not be found. So unfortunately, all of the Kinison scenes and most of Dresher's scenes have been lost entirely, almost like they have sadly been erased from time, leaving eager fans only able to imagine what their input to the movie would have been like. But who knows, maybe the lost scenes will be recovered one day and restored so we can all see what they would have been like. Number two, the Twilight Zone controversy got in the way of editing. Indeed, the Twilight Zone movie incident sure did leave a long and lasting effect on John Landis's career. If you want to know more about the incident, then check out my episode on the Twilight Zone movie. But in short, while Landis was directing a scene for the Twilight Zone movie, actor Vic Morrow and two child actors sadly lost their lives, to which this event would forever haunt Landis, of which led to a court case, in which the case was taking place in the later part of the Three Amigos production, which affected the movie's editing process. Landis did edit together a cut of the movie while he was on trial, but the trial probably affected his editing of the movie, and Orion Pictures weren't satisfied with his cut, which led the studio to make drastic big edits to Three Amigos, which probably explains why there were so many deleted scenes as mentioned. It also makes me curious to know what the Landis cut of the movie would have been like. But I'm not mad at Orion Pictures. I mean, the next year they did make Robocop, so all is forgiven. Number one, three cheers for Three Amigos. Three Amigos was released in December 1986 and made $39.2 million at the box office, making a tidy income, but nothing too spectacular. However, the critics didn't seem to like the Three Amigos. Some criticisms aimed at the movie was despite having an impressive cast of funny talent, the movie was just lacking the punch you would expect from the likes of Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short being together. It was explained to be lacking the manic, zany comedy and genuinely out of control funny moments although many have since claimed that the movie was judged too harshly upon its initial release and that it was underrated. Three Amigos has since become a beloved cult classic despite its lackluster release and has proven to have longevity which has increased in time. It's often regarded as one of the greatest comedy movies of the 1980s and even made it to 79 on Bravo's list of funniest movies of all time. In 2016, Empire Magazine did a reunion photo shoot with Martin, Chase, and Short, and even though they weren't in their full get-up, it's still great seeing them together and in character. It may have been overlooked when it came out, but Three Amigos was a very fun, enjoyable movie which brought together three great comedic actors. I know that some people have issues with the way that some characters are stereotypically portrayed in The Three Amigos, which I get and I understand but I think the movie is just a product of its time and that actually all the characters in the movie are over the top and cartoonish caricatures. So I don't think the movie was out to cause offense or harm, but rather it probably hasn't aged as well with modern times. But that said, it is still fun and enjoyable and it's great seeing these three main leads together. So if you want a good laugh and are okay with 1980s sensibilities, then I say check out The Three Amigos. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I swear, son of a motherless goat is still one of my favorite insults ever. See ya!